should, we will continue our discussion, uh, which we failed to finish um, last year. Uh, that is on the second controversy, which we tried to examine. That is about um, the Cavite mutiny. Okay, whether it's a whether it's uh, it's a plot against the government or mm -hmm. it's merely uh, it's merely a labor issue by workers or laborers of the Cavite arsenal. Also, um, uh, we we will also be discussing uh, uh, we will also be discussing the specifics of uh, the learning task that you're supposed to complete for this week, and uh, to also to give you an advance note that uh, prior the prior the final examination, which is scheduled next week, uh, you might be asked to complete a uh, to complete a unit test. Okay, to to serve as as a review, okay, prior to the taking of the final examination in this course. I think I made mention of this uh, last meeting with you, or last year with you, and uh, most of you, or all of you, agreed to have the unit test because it would certainly help you, uh, help you prepare for a better score or for a passing score uh, during the final examination. Okay. So allow me to share first the presentation which we shall be using okay, in our, in the continuation, should I say, of our discussion as regards uh, the Cavite mutiny. Okay, as I have said, um, we will be making use of the presentation prepared by uh, Mr. Manalo, Kyle Hayden Manalo, uh, because the presentation, uh, his presentation, okay, his presentation is complete to present uh, this controversy as regards uh, the Cavite mutiny. May we just have a rundown of what we already have discussed last year, okay, as we said that uh, in 1872, okay, there were two uh, historic events uh, that took place during that time. Okay, and the first one is about the Cavite mutiny. Okay, the, the controversy that we are trying to examine now. Okay, and uh, most historians would uh, tell us that the Cavite mutiny is a major factor in the awakening of nationalism among the Filipinos. Okay, though in the Filipino perspective, it's a labor issue. But uh, this labor issue has reawakened, the, the, the result of this labor issue has reawakened that sense of nationalism among Filipinos to really fight for freedom, to fight for democracy against uh, the Spanish government. So when we say mutiny, we also have defined this last meeting, it's a rebellion against an authority. Okay, for the, for the Spanish perspective, it's a rebellion against the Spanish government or even against the church. While for the Filipino perspective, it's a rebellion against uh, against the administration of the Cavite Arsenal, where the Filipino laborers or those who participated in the forced labor were asked to uh, were asked to render their service in the construction of the galleon ships or galleon, as we have said. And it comes from the old verb mutine, or mutine, should I say mutine, it should be mutine, uh, which means revolt. Okay? Uh, we said that the Cavite mutiny is an uprising of military personnel of Fort San Felipe. Okay? And uh, the Fort San Felipe, when we say fort, uh, certainly it's near, uh, it's near the, the sea. Okay? Because that time we said that the Cavite arsenal is a it's a um, it's it's a it's a kind of factory or it's a kind of a, a company where Filipinos are forced or where laborers are asked to build ships for the Manila Acapulco galleon trade. We made mention of the Manila Acapulco galleon trade last meeting that it's a very important trade between uh, between Philippines between the the country and uh, and Mexico. Acapulco is in Mexico. Manila is in the Philippines, of course. Okay, the Manila Acapulco Galleon trade. And we said last meeting that this is a very important trade because this has brought exchange of goods 
exchange of uh, exchange of flora and even fauna. When I say flora, we are referring to plant species. When we say fauna, we are referring to animal species. Okay, there is this an exchange. Okay, of this, there's an exchange of these goods. Okay, between that of Manila and that of Acapulco, Mexico. Okay, kaya nga sinasabi natin na ang halaga ng Manila Acapulco Galleon trade, ang Manila Acapulco Galleon trade ang nakapagdala ng mga iba't ibang uri ng mga gulay, iba't ibang uri ng produkto mula sa Mexico, okay, uh, papunta dito sa ating bansa, papunta sa Pilipinas. Kaya sinasabi natin, for example, yung ating cacao, yung ating kamatis, ito ay hindi original na mga gulay sa Pilipinas, kundi ito ay mga gulay na nagmula sa Mexico or Mexico. Okay? So there were around 200 soldiers and laborers rose up in the belief that it would elevate to a national uprising. The mutiny was unsuccessful and government soldiers executed many of the participants. So this is just an overview of what the Vita mutiny is. Okay? It certainly is a rebellion. But is it a rebellion against the Spanish government? Is it a rebellion against the authorities or against the administration of the of the of Fort San Felipe because of the abuses and because of the and because of malpractices they did, okay, which is against the which is uh, which does not which which did not should I uh, should I say which did not respect okay uh, the rights of the workers of the said uh, fort. So, and the second very important event that took place in 1872 is the martyrdom of the three priests. Okay? Uh, Gomburza, Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Asinto Zamora. Okay? We, we collectively uh, know them as Gomburza, the collective name of these three martyred priests. They were martyred, no? As a result, they were executed as a result of the Cavite mutiny. Yun ang titignan natin maya maya. Okay? Kung bakit nadamay sila at kung bakit nakasama sila doon sa mga sinitilang buhay para may pakita ng, ng pamahalaang Kastila na ang ginawa sa Cavite Mutiny ay isang rebellion, isang pag-aaklas para mapatalasik ang pamahalaang Kastila. So yun natin titignan. If you, if, you, if you are updated with my Facebook post, no, I posted a video of a restoration of the photos of, uh, uh, the photos of these three priests. I hope, uh, yeah, I think it's only Lester. Lester is my friend in Facebook. Lester, uh, I just do not know with Prince if he, have, if he has seen it. Uh, who else? Uh, Regeline, are you my friend in Facebook? I just do not know with the others, okay? Uh, because I can no longer add some of those who uh, invited me to be their friends, okay? So, um, they were tagged as the masterminds of the Cavite community in the perspective of the, of the Spanish government, okay? Para sa mga, para sa, sa perspektibong Kastila, uh, ang inakala nila ay ang tatlong paring ito ang uta sa likod ng Cavite Mutiny, sa likod ng pag aklas ng, ng 200 soldiers in the Fort uh, San Felipe or in Cavite Arsenal. Now, uh, the, the, these priests were prominent Filipino priests charged with treason and sedition. Yeah, this is the result of the of the Cavite mutiny, as, I, as we have said. The Spanish clergy uh, connected the priests to the mutiny as part of conspiracy to stifle the movement of secular priests who decide to have their own parishes. Let us say that during that time, okay, there were already there were already disgust or uh, discontentment from Filipinos on the way Spain is governing our country because of malpractices, abuses, uh, disrespect to human rights, and others. Kaya nga sabi natin nung mga nakaraang talakayan natin na merong dalawang grupong nabuo, okay, laban sa laban sa pamahalaang Kastila, ito yung reformista, mga reformista, at ito naman yung mga revolutionaryo. Yung mga revolutionaryo, they seek for, they sought, should I say, they sought for total freedom, total independence from Spanish government while the um, uh, reformists, that of Rizal, um, that of Rizal, uh, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, and others, they just, uh, they sought for, they merely sought for recognition of the Philippines as province of Spain, but not really total freedom from, or total liberation from, uh, from Spain or from the royal, uh, royal, royal king of Spain. Now, um, that time, uh, there were Filipino priests, and there's a group of Filipino priests 
who have been wanting for the Filipinization of uh, the church or secularization of the local churches. What do we mean by secularization? That uh, Filipino priests should also be assigned as parish priests already of these communities. Because during that time, it's only the, only the, only the Spanish priests or uh, Western, Western priests could be allowed or could be given that privilege to be a parish priest of a certain uh, of a certain church or a certain local uh, uh, local church or a diocese. Kaya yung mga Pilipino noon, ang kanilang trabaho ay mga assistant parish priest lamang. Okay? Uh, hindi talaga silang namumuno sa mga simbahan sa kanilang komunidad. And this has been, this has always been a, uh, this has always been um the purpose of that movement, of that secular movement of the Filipino priests during the Spanish time. Now, we, we, we have to review who these uh, priests are. The first one is Father Mariano Gomez, uh, an old man in his mid-70s, Chinese Filipino, born in Cavite. Okay, so mix of Chinese and Filipino. He held the most senior position of the three as Archbishop Vicar in Cavite. Vicar is an assistant, okay? He was truly nationalistic and accepted the death penalty calmly as though it were his penance for being pro filipino Father Jose Burgos is of Spanish descent, merong, merong dugong Spanyol, uh, Filipino-Spanish, born in the Philippines. He was a parish priest of the Manila Cathedral and had been known to be close to the Liberal Governor General de la Torre. Please take note that, um, please take note that, um, that he was given that title as parish priest because he is of Spanish descent. Okay, you take note of that. But he was tagged as the mastermind, as one of the masterminds of the Cavite, uh, Cavite mutiny because Father Jose Burgos supports the secularization of the church and at the same time he is close to governor general de la torre and governor Gen general de la torre is a pro-filipino okay he's a pro-filipino uh, governor general okay he was 35 years old at that time and was active and outspoken advocating the filipinization of the clergy the next priest is father jacinto zamora 37 years old. He was also a Spanish descent. Okay, kaya meron pa kaya isa rin siyang parish priest ng isang community of a local church. Uh, Marikina, as we have said, he was known to be unfriendly to and would not countenance any arrogance or authoritative behavior from Span Spaniards coming from Spain. Both Jacinto and Zamora and that of uh, Burgos, though they have that Spanish descent, Spanish blood. Okay, they don't really agree with abuses. They 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 really would they really would fight for for anyone. Okay, for anyone who would do abuses, who would do malpractices in the government. That's how that's how nice these two uh, priests with Philippine uh, with Spanish descent are. Okay. Now we proceed now to the Spanish accounts of the Cavite mutiny. There were uh, there were two two should I say there there were two. Uh, there were two Spanish accounts as regards the Cavite mutiny. When we say account, it's a narration. Okay, it's a it's a write up. As again, uh, it's a write up as regards uh, the, the the Cavite mutiny. But the writers of these are Spaniards. Okay, hence the Spanish perspective of the Cavite mutiny. The first one is Montero's account of the Cavite mutiny. And the second one is the official report of the Governor General then, okay, during the Cavite mutiny, um, Cavite mutiny incident, that of the, the report of Governor General Izquierdo, okay, as regards the Cavite mutiny. Now, who is Jose Montero y Vidal? Okay, Jose Montero y Vidal is a Spanish historian. His account centered on how the event was an attempt in overthrowing the Spanish government in the Philippines, and his account on mutiny was criticized as woefully biased. Okay? Uh, well, 
I, I really love reading your outputs. I really love reading your 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 worksheets, your completed worksheets, because you truly have worked hard for it. You really have provided a quality output. That's why most of you got a good score in the said uh, worksheet. Now, this is an excerpt from Montero's account of the Cavite mutiny. He said, the idea of attaining their independence, their referring to Filipinos, it was towards this goal that they started to work with the powerful assistance of a certain section of the native clergy. So it was Montero, a Spanish historian, who associated, okay, who associated the Cavite mutiny to that of the native clergy who were also working for the, secular, the, the secularization movement or the Philippine, Philippinization of the clergy or of the uh, Catholic Church. Okay? Now, who is Governor Rafael Izquierdo? He's the implicated, he implicated the native clergy. Okay, so he also he also both 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 documents both accounts. Okay, implicated the native clergy, uh, particularly uh, with the leadership of uh, of uh, Gomburza, who were active in the movement towards secularization of parishes. In a biased report made by his government, he highlighted the attempt to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines to install a new Hari in the persons of Father Burgos and Zamora. So that was the report, okay, given by Izquierdo, okay, to the uh, Spanish government. According to Izquierdo, native clergy attracted supporters by giving them charismatic assurance that their fight would not fail because they had God's support, aside from promises of lofty rewards such as employment, wealth, and ranks in the army. So this is what Izquierdo believes in, okay, that... Uh, that the participants or those who or those who participated in the Kabi community in the rebellion were motivated to participate because of the attraction or motivation made by native clergy. That is in case that these Filipino natives who participate in the Kabi community, then they would be given employment, wealth, and ranks in the army. So that was the motivation according to Izquierdo. Now, the official report of government is clear, though, on the Cavite Community of 1872 also mentioned of this. It has not been clearly determined if they plan to establish a monarchy or a republic because the Indios have no word in their language to describe this form of government. Whose head in Filipino would be called Hari, but it turns out that they would place at the head of the government a priest that the head selected would be Jose Burgos or Jacinto Zamora. Okay, so this was the, 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 uh, the, the actual translation of the report of Governor Izquierdo. Now, please take note. Uh, in your readings, I hope you, you, I hope you have highlighted this. Please take note that okay, the reason for the revolution, okay, the Spanish accounts underscore, they never have mentioned that the immediate reason, that the actual reason of the revolution was because of the abolition of privileges enjoyed by the workers of Cavite Arsenal, such as exemption from payment of tribute and being employed in Polo's tea services. So those who are those who are those who are working in the Cavite Arsenal, those who are working in Fort San Felipe, are supposed to be exempted from forced labor, even payment of tribute or tax. But this has been abolished. This has not been given. This has been uh, this has been uh, yeah, abolished or or removed by then Governor General Izquierdo. And because this privilege has been removed from them have been abolished from them, okay, ha have been abolished, okay, this caused the discontentment, okay, of the 200 soldiers working in the Cavite Arsenal, okay, and led to the rebellion against administration of the uh, Cavite Arsenal or Fort San Felipe. So this is the immediate reason. 
it's not really about it's not really about overthrowing the overthrowing the the Spanish government or the start of a big revolution against the Spanish government to overthrow the Spanish government. No, it's not that. It's merely the abolition of the privileges enjoyed by the workers of Cavite Arsenal. The presence of the native clergy against the Spanish friars conspired and supported the rebels. Okay. Now, in the Spaniard, in the Spanish accounts or Spaniards' accounts in 1872, it was premeditated a part of a big conspiracy among educated leaders, mestizos, lawyers, and residents of Manila and Cavite. And these accounts allegedly planned to liquidate high-ranking Spanish of officers, then kill friars. So, ito daw yung ano? Ito daw yung 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 Cavite mismo plano daw talaga nila ay uh, to liquidate or to kill high-ranking Spanish officers, and after that, to kill also the Spanish friars. So that was in the Spanish perspective. The accounts detail, these two accounts, these Spanish accounts or Spaniards' accounts detail that on January 20, 1872, the district of Sampalo in Manila celebrated the Feast of the Virgin Loreto, came with it where some fireworks displayed because it's a feast. Yes, that's it. So there are fireworks. The Capitanos mistook this as the signal to commence with the attack. So, um, akala ng mga Capitanyo, ito daw ay isang isang senyales na pwede rin nilang simulan ang pag-aaklas o ang revolution. So, the Spanish accounts also uh, also noted this. The 200 men was led by Sergeant La Madrid, attacked Spanish officers at sight and seized the arsenal. Please take note that Filipino soldiers, Filipino native soldiers, okay, uh, Filipino native soldiers, aside from aside from serving as soldiers during that time, they also have to work in the Cavite arsenal. And if they would work in the Cavite arsenal in building ships, in building galleons, then they are exempted already from paying the tribute or tax and even from rendering forced labor or uh, follow a servicio. Okay? Izquierdo, upon learning the attack, ordered the enforcement of the Spanish forces in Cavite to quell the revolt or to kill the revolt. The revolution was easily crushed when Manileños, who were expected to aid the Cavitenos, did not arrive. So, uh, the Cavite mutiny did, didn't really succeed. Okay? Didn't really succeed because it was easily crushed because the Manileños didn't did, did help. Okay? Uh, those uh, those who participated in the revolt. In result of the Cavite mutiny, leaders of the plot were killed, including Fathers Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. They were tried by a court martial and sentenced to be executed. At ang execution noon ay pamamagitan ng garote. Okay? And others who were killed uh, others who were implicated, such as, these were executed also, that of Joaquin Pardo de Tavera, Antonio Maria Regidor, Jose Basa, and Pio Basa. So these were uh, executed. And other Filipino lawmakers were suspended from the practice of law, arrested, and sentenced to life imprisonment at the Mariana Island. Uh, during that time, uh, there is what we call as a punishment as exile. Okay? Pag exile, you will you will uh, you will be you will be um, transported to a far area, far flung area, and you will stay there, okay? And you will you will not be able to see your family or spend time with your family because uh, you were exiled in a far flung place or a far flung or even outside the Philippines, okay? That was uh, one of the punishments then. On February 17, 1872, the Gomburza were executed by Garote in public to serve as a threat to Filipinos ne that they should never attempt to fight the Spaniards again. This is a scene purportedly witnessed by a young Jose Rizal. So during that time, okay, during the execution, was Jose Rizal, Jose Rizal, Jose Rizal, uh, Jose Rizal witnessed, okay, this execution. That's why, uh, that's why later we will we will learn that. Um, the El Filibusterismo, the second novel of Dr. Jose Rizal, okay, was dedicated to these three priests. 
Okay? Now, please take note that there are differing accounts of the events of 1872 because uh, there were writers, also historians, who historians who also have written their own uh, their own uh, interpretation or yeah their own interpretation of what took place uh, in the Cavite mutiny. The two Filipino accounts, not Filipino accounts, but uh, differing accounts, okay, uh, different accounts. Okay, compared to the Spaniards' perspective, Spaniards' account, that of Pardo de Tavera's account of the Cavite mutiny, and uh, I plow plow shoot account of uh, the Cavite mutiny. Now, who is uh, Trinidad Jimenez Gildo Pardo de Tavera? He's a Filipino scholar and researcher. Okay, he wrote a Filipino version of the bloody incident in Cavite, and according to de Tavera. The incident was merely a mutiny by Filipino soldiers and laborers of the Cavite Arsenal to the dissatisfaction arising from the draconian policies of Izquierdo. Okay, draconian policies of Izquierdo, and what is the, the policy of, of Governor General Izquierdo then is the abolition of privileges and prohibition of the founding of the School of Arts and Trade. But because during that time, uh, prior to the Governor General uh, Governor Generalship of, of Izquierdo, Okay, uh, there's, uh, there's, um, uh, sinisnabi ko na kanina na, ano, na, na Governor General. Sinisnabi kong Governor General kanina? May makaalala? Gising pa kayo, class? Hello? May gising pa ba? No one's responding. May gising pa sa inyo? Okay, the, the, the previous Governor General prior to Izquierdo, okay, is a pro-Filipino Governor General as we have said. Okay, now, and there's a plan then of the previous of the former Governor General prior to Izquierdo of the founding of the School of Arts and Trades. Uh, for Filipinos, okay? But this has not been implemented by Izquierdo. So, there's what we call draconian policy. When you say draconian policy, it's a harsh policy, okay? It's an authoritarian policy of Izquierdo. Now, the central Spanish government was planning to deprive the friars of all the powers of intervention in matters of civil government and direction and management of educational institutions. So, this is an excerpt from Pardo de Tapera's account of the Cavite Mutiny. He said, Filipinos had great hope of an improvement in the affairs of their country. The friars feared that their power in the colony would soon be complete a thing of the past. Now, how about the account of Edmund Plauchut, a French writer? He complimented Tapera's account and analyzed the motivation of the 1872 mutiny. And he said, the arrival in Manila of General Izquierdo <coughs> put a sudden end to all dreams of reform. Because, because the former governor general then okay, have really prepared so much uh, plans and projects okay, for the Filipinos. But with the coming of Izquierdo, this has put a sudden death to all these dreams of reforms for Filipinos. Such a policy must really end in a strong desire on the part of the other to repress cruelty. Now, What's the differing account? Friars used the Vita mutiny as part of a larger conspiracy to cement their dominance. They showcased the mutiny as part of a greater conspiracy in the Philippines by Filipinos to overthrow the Spanish government. Unintentionally, it resulted in the martyrdom of Bamburza and paved way to the revolution culminating in 1898. <coughs> so that was the Rizal dedicated his second novel, El Filibusterismo, to their memory. I dedicate my work to you as victims of the evil which I, under, which I undertake to combat. So, uh, that, that's the difference between the two accounts. Kumbaga, nagamit lamang, nagamit lamang ang, nagamit lamang ang, ang Cavite mutiny, ang mga tumali sa Cavite mutiny ng mga pari, Okay, ng mga pari para patalsikin ang 
uh, pamahalaang Kastila. Ngunit, imbes na yung mga pari, okay, imbes na yung mga pari na, mga pa, lahat ng mga pari, particular, particularly yung mga uh, whether Spanish descent or not, okay, ang maparusahan, nadamay ang mga Filipino <coughs> clergy. Because it was associated, it was wrongly associated to the secularization of the Filipino, at uh, the secularization of uh, clergy or secularization of the of the local churches, a Filipinization of the local churches. Okay, so um, well, <coughs> the good point about this is whether it's a rebellion against the government, the Spanish government, or against the workers of the Pabitya Arsenal. Kung titignan natin, medyo maganda rin na nangyari siya dahil naging, naging uh, dahilan siya para mamulat ang mamulat ang pagiging nationalistic ng mga Pilipino para ipaglaban ng kanilang mga karapatan. Okay? Naging uh, naging pintuan siya, naging oportunidad siya para nang sa ganun ay, mul- ay, ay mas, ma- ma- mas mamulat ng mabuti. Okay? Mas mamulat ng mabuti ang, ang mga Pilipino sa mga bagay-bagay na dapat nilang paglaban, lalong-lalo na ang kanilang karapatan bilang mga tao at ang kanilang karapatan mabuhay sa isang komunidad na malaya at komunidad na malaya sa pangabuso, malaya sa diskriminasyon, at malaya sa hindi magandang gawain ng mga uh, ng, ng gobyerno lalo na. Okay? So that's about the Cavite Mutiny. Now we proceed now to question and answer. Uh, any question as regards uh, the Cavite Mutiny, you may make use of the chat uh, of the chat area if you would like to ask. May mga tanong ho ba? Yung mga may malakas na connection, maari po kayo magsalita. Nan, sir. Thank you, Ezekiel. Thank you, Lester. Um, konti na lang pala kayo, no? One, two. Angel, Eris, Ezekiel, Chorina, Christine, Laila, Lester, and Ruby Miles. Okay, thank you for attending our class. I think the others have the others have a problem as regard to the internet connectivity. Anyway, allow me then to explain to you, okay, your task for this week because you have two tasks, okay, for this week, okay. So, um, allow me to share. Uh, allow me to share the elements. Sorry. Okay. Okay, nakikita na niya yung LMS. Okay, so this is the last uh, chapter. Okay, we will no longer be able to meet our dis- uh, to meet lesson 5 that is on local history. Okay, this will be the last uh, chapter prior to the final examination. Okay, so we have lesson 4 here and there are two topics that of agrarian reform policies and the philippine constitution so i hope that uh within this week you find time to read about uh agrarian reform okay agrarian reform this is about agrarian reform and the other one is uh the philippine uh, constitution okay now uh your task for uh, your task for agrarian reform uh Next meeting that will be on Wednesday, uh, we will be discussing about agrarian reform policies, okay, and we hope to be able to discuss also the Philippine Constitution. Uh, we will no longer be discussing uh, the last two controversies, that of results retraction, whether he retracted or not, and that of uh, the cry of uh, cry of revolution, cry of national revolution. 
Uh, but please take note that um, please take note that for the for results retraction, okay, uh, we we have to understand that uh, result did not retract, okay, but it does not mean that result is not uh, that result is not a believer, a believer of God, or believer of the church. It only it only the, the documents, the pro retraction documents and anti retraction documents would clearly tell us that Rizal is against abuses, both of the government and that of the church. He is not against something that is good, but he is against those something that those something that abuse okay that abuse the Filipino people. Yun lamang yun, yung, yung point na yun. For the cry of national revolution, uh, I think this has been settled, that it's the cry of Balintawak and not the cry of Pugad Lawin. And most of you, okay, provided a good reason as regards that. Anyway, in the, in the unit test later, okay, that the coverage of the unit test would all be about the final term because the, your final examination will not just be will not just cover, should I say, will not just cover um, the final topics or final lessons or lessons for finals, but will also cover 20% of the prelims, uh, then 20% of midterms, and 40% of uh, the, the final term. Only, only 80 items. Okay, there would only be 80 items in your, uh, in your exam. Okay? So now, allow me to explain to you uh, the first task for this week, which is uh, your reaction on the rice tarification law. Okay, now, as a team, you have to demonstrate your comprehension of at least three commentaries or articles as regards the rice tarification law through answering the following questions. So, so you will still be working with your previous uh, team members, okay? previous team members. What you will do is, I would like you to search for three articles, three commentaries, or an editorial maybe, or an article, or a write-up as regards the Rice Tarification Law or the Republic Act 11203. Okay? Three commentaries or articles or write-ups. Now, you have to study as a team these three commentaries and you discuss okay, your understanding of these commentaries in the forum section. And uh, you have to answer, you make use of Microsoft Word or any, or any Word document, a Word, Word app in your phone to answer these questions, to summarize the three commentaries. In your opinion, what are the three most important issues raised by the authors of the selected commentaries or articles. You have to answer that. Then the next question is, do you support the issues presented by the authors in their commentaries or articles? Why or why not? Then the third one, in your opinion, is the rice tarification law beneficial for farmers? You have to explain your answer. And of course, you have to be guided with the rubric. Okay, what's the rubric? The rubric is, of course, we have content, collaboration, grammar, punctuation, and spelling as, um, as the success indicators or the criteria. Um, you would be given a perfect score in the content if you have demonstrated mastery of core content in reading or video in, uh, in, in, in your reading uh, and offers thoughtful responses to reaction questions. Collaboration is all members of the team are engaged in a learning conversation to discuss the chosen commentaries exchange of insights from all members are clearly evident in the forum do not just uh, do not just um uh, do not just break the task from among your team members but i expect you to discuss with them okay you share your insights with them you question each other's insights until until you arrive into a good answer or quality answers to the different questions then grammar punctuation and spelling mastery of grammar spelling mechanics enhances the effectiveness of communication so please, uh, your output should be free from free from uh, grammatical lapses, or grammatical lapses, or even spelling errors. Okay, it's up to you. The format, it's up to you to decide on that as a team. 
okay? Um, then you just have to upload, okay? The soft copy of your, the soft copy of your, the soft copy of your, uh, of your reaction paper, or the soft copy of your answers to the three questions, and at the same time, uh, the link where you have, uh, the link where you have referred the article for the commentary. Ulitin ko yun, no? Kailangan ilagay doon sa baba ng inyong sagot yung link, okay? Yung URL address nung pinagkuhanan ninyo ng komentaryo tungkol sa rice clarification law. Okay, klaro ho ba iyon? Okay, so that is, that is your first task for this week. Now, this is also the second topic under uh, finals, okay, under chapter 4 or lesson 4, uh, the evolution of the Philippine Constitution. Okay, I think we will no longer be discussing about this because I have found a good uh, YouTube discussion, a YouTube video discussion as regards uh, the evolution of Philippine Constitution. I already have provided it here. I uploaded it in our LMS. Just have to watch it in Tantian for possibly can you study the materials being provided here. What we will just be discussing next meeting would only be the agrarian reform. Okay, so that's it. So your task for this is you will work uh, in triad or in trees. Work in trees or triad. Sorry, I have to edit that. Okay, you work in trees or triad. Okay, to complete to complete a summary chart of the evolution of the Philippine Constitution. You use the forum section of the new LMS to discuss as a team. Consider the rubric below: completeness, quality, collaboration, and miscellaneous. Again, in the collaboration part, I expect you to work really with your team, with your triads, with your triad members, so that you would have an exchange, a quality exchange of insights as regards uh, the activity or as regards the learning task. Okay? Now, allow me to, to explain to you the summary chart. Okay? Now, before I explain to you the summary chart, uh, before, before I'll show you the summary chart, I would like you to, to learn who your members are in the triad, okay? The evolution of the Philippine Constitution. I think there, there was a mistake here, and, and uh, the, mistake, uh, the mistake has been brought into my attention by Regeline. Regeline, I think, messaged me uh, in the messenger. Uh, I think I doubled the name of a person. I, I included her. Uh, I included her into two triads. Okay, I just do not know where the mistake is. Okay, now, for triad one, okay, we have uh, Gideon, Olga, and Marjorie to work together. That's triad one. Triad two, we have Heaven, Laila Tagari, and Ruby Tadapan. Triad three, we have Beverly, Maika and Joanna. Uh, triad 4, we have Alexia, Prince, and Maria Kalinisan. Triad 5 is Mark, Jeanette, and Emmanuel Jr. Triad 6 is Justine, Mark, and September. Please help me know kung sino hindi na, kung, kung sino hindi na banggit sa grouping ha para palitan natin si yung isa na na, na ulit. Then Team 7, Triad 7 is Avila Bennett, Jan Moreno, and Chirbet de los Santos. Triad 8 is Rodessa Balbuena, Sara Monino, and Francis Diamzon. Triad 9 is Eris Batang, Fiola Maramag, and Joanna Domingo. Triad 10 is Angel Batad, Shelin Mamawag, and Dong Oxorina. I think si Batad, Angel, at na doble ko. Then, um... Triad, uh, no, triad 11, uh, triad, yeah. triad 11 is Batad Angel, Madarang Daniel, and Esquivel Regilin. I think, um, I think, uh, Regilin and Daniel, you did not to include Angel in your team. I think the two of you could be able to do the task. Okay, so I'll, I'll delete, um, I'll, I'll delete Angel here. Angel will be team 10 instead of team 11. Okay, that's team trial 11. 
We have triad 12 is Jan May, Camila, and Alaniz. Triad 13 is Angelina, Feliz, and Christine. Triad 14 is Fredeline, Riza, and Tisha. Okay, so that's it. So there are three, uh, there are 14 groups, okay, in our, uh, 14 groups in our, uh, in our, in the second learning task for this week. Okay? Now, al allow me to, allow me to share, okay, to share to you the worksheet and explain to you how you are to go about it. Okay, so this is the worksheet. Sorry. Okay, so this is the worksheet class, okay? You just have to fill out, okay, the, the information being asked of you in each column or each row of the summary chart. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six uh, constitution, okay, of the Philippines. Uh, but, but take note that we only have one constitution, okay? Take note of that. We only have one constitution, only that our constitution has evolved through time. Okay, it has evolved through time. Okay, the first one is the Constitution of Biak Nabato, the 1935 Constitution of the Philippines or the Commonwealth Constitution, the 1943 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines, the 1973 Constitution, the 1986 Provisional Constitution or popularly known as the Freedom Constitution, and the Constitution that we have now up to now, the 1987 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. Uh, so this uh, this is how our constitution has evolved through time. So what we will do is to summarize all this evolution of the Philippine constitution uh, through supplying uh, the required information in each row, in each row of each column of uh, this summary chart. Who are the authors? The historical context. When we say historical context, uh, why was it uh, written that time? Why was it created that time? Okay, the reason why was it created, that's what we mean by historical context, or what are the significant events that took place that led to the creation or that led to the drafting of this constitution. That's what we mean by historical context. Then the purpose of creation, why was it created? Then the unique provision, unique? if you didn't see any unique provision, you just have to mention no unique provision has been, has been included. Or if there's, a, but better to include a unique provision because there would certainly be a unique provision for each, uh, for each uh, constitution. Then years that the constitution that that constitution has been implemented in the country or in the uh, Philippines. So that's it. So that's how you are to summarize. Okay, the uh, the uh, that's how you are to complete the summary chart. Okay, so any any question on the activity or any question as regards your learning task for this week? Eris, you're into Gigra already, no? Still in the do, Eris? Ezekiel? Sir? Nasaan ka sa Gigra ko? Nasa sa inyo? Nasa ilagan po, sir. Nasa ilagan. Kung sa connection mo dyan, okay naman. Okay naman po, sir. Okay. Firina, how are you, Firina? Po. Okay ka lang, Firina. Any question? None, sir. Okay None. lang. Uh, thank you, Firina. How about Christine? Christine, any question na din? Nan, Christine is not responding. Wala po, sir. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> she responded. Okay. Laila, about Laila? Any question, Laila? Nan, sir. Nan, uh, Lester? Wala po, sir. Wala naman. Uh, Ruby Miles? Wala din po, sir. Uh, yeah, the... the Seven of you, thank you for regularly attending our conference. Now, I observe that you keep attending our conference, and that's a good thing. That's a good, uh, that's a good indication that um, you're really helping yourself to, uh, to learn in this new normal. Thank you for regularly attending our class. 
I also have seen, I also have observed some of you who are not, uh, who have never attended pa, okay, uh, for these finals. Yeah, I've seen some. Uh, nakikita ko kasi yung mga list natin. And I know I am aware of those who keep attending and those who are not really attending our class. I just really hope that uh, they are participating in the team task event every week. And I really hope that uh, for, for those who are attending now, Aries, Ezekiel, Serena, Christine, Laila, Lester, and Ruby Miles, please, uh, if in case, and those who would be watching okay, the, this video later, once I upload it in the YouTube, uh, please be reminded that um, if in case that there are some, that there are members of your team who are not really participating in the completion of the task, please do not include them, do not include their names in the submission of your final output. Because it would really be unfair that you've been doing so much, that you've been trying hard enough to learn from this and to complete the task, and yet there are some team members who are not really actively participating or engaging themselves in the completion of the learning task. So better not include them in the list once you submitted your final output because that would really be unfair for your part. Okay? So again, next meeting we will meet at the same time at 10.30 to 12. We will discuss about agrarian reform. Then I also have to discuss to you your unit test by next week. By Monday, siguro ang unit test ninyo. Would you like it to have it on Monday, the unit test? Okay. Uh, ganito, uh, my question is this, when would you like to have the unit test? Now, since I will be uploading this video in, the, in, in, in my YouTube channel, okay, please comment, okay, please comment wh whether, okay, please comment your answer, when would you like to have the unit test prior to the final examination in this course, okay, so that I would know what to do, okay, clear? Yes, sir. Okay. You know, we yes, forgot sir. to thank you for responding. We forgot to to start the meeting with a prayer. Okay, but I we will now be ending our discussion because I will be giving you time to discuss with your team members. Okay, the learning task that you're supposed to do within the week. Okay, so may we have a very good prayer, a very good closing prayer from Ruby Miles Kadapan. Ruby, please uh, lead us the closing prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and care. Thank you for another day that you've given us to learn from Sir Herbert. Please give, give us good health and protect our family's efforts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for attending and hope to see you again on Wednesday. Okay? So, salamat ang marami. Ingat kayo. Bye, sir. Bye-bye.